Hey everyone, Dylan Schumacher, Citadel Defense, and today we're going to talk about the pack. This is going to be part two of the American Minuteman gear, and for this one I want to talk about packs, uh, which is technically your third line of gear, right? Uh, when I first started looking at videos about packs years and years ago, uh, it was always very mysterious to me, like, what, what goes in this pack? What is it? What is it that it holds and why do you carry it? And I never really found very good videos on it and, uh, and so I still couldn't tell you. Uh, but it turns out that what goes in the pack is incredibly boring uh, because it's just life sustainment stuff. Uh, water, food, and sleeping stuff. That's about 90% of your pack right there. Again, we're talking in the context of longer range patrols and you're out with a couple of your boys wandering through the woods or some kind of rural area and you need to carry with you what you need in order to survive, in order to live, in order to be able to fight for the next you know, 48 to 72 hours. So I'm gonna talk about this pack. This is just my pack. It's just one iteration. It's just one iteration of my pack. This might change in a couple months. Um, so, you know, like all of your gear, right? There are constantly things that are getting adjusted and changed and modified. And, and I might just buy a whole new pack and put everything in there. Who knows, things change. So I'm gonna go through this to hopefully give you some ideas and some context of what should be in your pack in general, and then what you could do to set up your pack so that you have a bag that's ready to go that you can grab, and you know when you grab that bag, you're ready to live and eat for the next 48 to 72 hours. So here we go. The pack itself is a first tactical 24 hour pack. Uh, so I've taken a 24 hour pack and I'm actually uh, plussed it up here to try to fit the 48 slash 72 hour roll and I think it's been pretty successful. I think it's worked pretty well. So my theory in general is to have the stuff that I would need on the outside of the pack uh, without actually having to open and get into the pack, right? So if I just need to stop to eat or top off some water or get a mag or whatever, I would have that stuff on the outside of the pack. So this is the way that I currently have it set up. Uh, this is just a Condor uh, four mag pouch here, right? So I just have four extra mags in the back, again, to be able to resupply off my kit and change out empties and stuff like that. So that's where I carry my reloads to fill out my kit. Uh, here is just extra medical, right? That's pretty obvious. I like this pouch. This is an AR500 armor pouch. And the nice thing is that it completely tears away. So I can roll it all the way or I can just tear the whole thing off. And so I like that because I can just grab that and go and now I have my medical here and I can take it from the pack and go use it or whatever. So that's a really cool pouch that works well here. Continuing on the outside of the pack, this is just my bedroll. Honestly, this is here because there was nowhere else to put it. <laughs> um, so it just kind of seemed like the best spot. I did have it on the bottom of the pack, but then that interfered when I wore my belt kit. So I just let it ride on the top of the pack because that was the most out of the way place. Uh, I have two water bottles on the side here that I have further strapped down with the retention straps. So these are just standard issue one quart water bottles. There is some extra room in here that if I had to stuff something else in there, I could. Uh, and these also have these fairly large uh, side pouches here. Like in this one right here, I have a drink mix. So you can just put kind of little other things in there. I also have my canteen cup on the water bottle pouch on this side. So that's two quarts of water, plus we'll get to it in a bit, but I do have a three quart bladder in the bag as well. So it was a total of five quarts of water on this pack. Additionally on the outside, I have these two larger Black Hawk uh, pouches. Uh, the nice thing about these is I'm able to stuff a total of three MREs in each of these, so I can carry six MREs on the bag. Uh, these are not like the full size military MREs with all, with all the extra added goodies in them. These are just kind of a stripped down meal MRE uh, from Ready Store, I think. So they don't have the full candies and all the other fun parts that the military MREs have, but they'll still get you through. So I have six of those, so it's a total of three meals a day for two days. So this bag does come with straps to tighten the bag up. One of the modifications I did have to make was to take some paracord, give myself a little extra play on this end because I like my straps to come around my water bottle to hold everything tight. Uh, remember, a tight pack is a light pack. Uh, so 
that is one of the modifications I had to make to, for this bag to press it into the service that I was looking to press it into. So that pretty much wraps up the outside of the pack. There's a top pouch right here that you probably can't see terribly well. In here, I just have a lens cloth because you know you need that for eye protection and uh, optics and stuff like that. This pouch here lifts up and as you can maybe see from there, there is a pocket back here. When that comes down in here, uh, I have some extra batteries, some caffeine pills, a pen and a marker, uh, a little red light. That's super nice to try to be able to see in here at night. Uh, I have an orange uh, signaling panel essentially, an extra carabiner because why not? And then I have an actual USB charger cord, again, because, hey, why not? Going into the main compartment of the pack. So in the main compartment, I do have my water bladder. Now, there is a technical pocket for the water bladder in this bag. However, when I put the water bladder in that pocket with everything else in here, the bag bows and that feels really uncomfortable against your back. So I've just stuffed that in here. It's not the best solution, but it's functional and it works. So we have another three liters of water in the bag and this is what I would drink from primarily when I am moving and grooving. This is a toiletries bag. So I don't have like my toothbrush in here right now, but that would be like my toothbrush, uh, baby wipes, Make sure to keep your bum clean. Uh, Luco tape, you know, other stuff like that. Anything you would need for toiletry essentials, mouthwash, stuff like that is gonna go in this bag, right? Just the stuff, the band-aids to keep you kind of up and running throughout the day. The Luco tape, highly, highly recommend that whenever you have blisters or cuts or whatever. This stuff is magic. It can be very painful to take off, but when it's on, it is on and it's gonna protect your skin. This is a large waterproof bag. This is one of the military waterproof bags. I might take this out of here just because the bag itself takes up a lot of space. However, I keep stuff in here that I want to be dry, namely socks and underwear and a t-shirt, right? So this is my change of clothes bag. So I have a couple pairs of socks in here, a couple underwears and a t-shirt. And this again, just keeps everything dry so that if I was in a rainstorm or I had to walk through a creek or whatever, my clothes are gonna stay dry. So that's pretty helpful to have. Like I said, I might just take that out and just use a Ziploc bag in order to save space. The other thing I could do is I could just stage this waterproof bag inside the whole bag and stuff all of this in the waterproof bag. That would be another thing to do here. This is my sleep system. Uh, this is a Recon 3 and it's good down to 23 degrees Fahrenheit, it says. Um, that's probably close to true. I've been outside. I've been in temperatures down to probably 30-ish degrees in this, and I was cold, um, but I did survive. Uh, it also has like a mummy um, kind of over the head thing, which is super nice. So big fan of the sleeping bag so far. It squashes down to a, a decent size, but still when that's in here, as you can tell, that's taking up the majority of the inside of my pack. And that in part is because again, this is a 24 hour pack that I have pressed into larger service. Before I forget, I do have a dump pouch on the outside of my bag here. That I just added in for random extra things that I might need to throw in the bag. Further into the bag here, uh, I have a little camo netting here. Um, my idea here is that I can take this on my person. Uh, I could use this to camouflage a position. It's decently large when it all comes out said and done. Uh, so it's about four feet by three feet. The other thing I could do is I could throw this over the bag itself, either to leave it in a stationary position to hide it or just throw it over the bag as I'm going through the woods uh, to again, further camouflage my backpack. Over in this pouch here, I have a rifle cleaning kit because you're gonna need a rifle cleaning kit, especially if you get a stuck casing or something like that, you need a rod to knock that out and then extra lube to make sure the gun is serviceable. I also have an extra pair of gloves in here in case I would forget mine or lose mine or they were to rip a hole in them or whatever. Uh, gloves are super important in the field. Just a couple days ago, I got a good rip open on my hand from when I was lifting, and it's been a real pain, but I'm just living around the house. If you were to be out in the field and get a rip open on your hand like that and have an open wound or something, that can really cause a lot of problems. So that's why we wear gloves, and that's why gloves are super important in the field. Uh, up here in this little mesh pouch here, this is my water purifying kit. So I do have a Sawyer water filter in here. 
uh, which was a gift from a friend of mine a couple years ago, uh, along with all the little accessories that go with it, so that even if I were to uh, run out of all five of my quarts of water, so I would still have a way to get more water and purify it so that I could still have water. Water is super important. Again, if you're outside and you're moving and grooving and you're carrying a pack or you're doing whatever and it's anything over 80 degrees, you are gonna drink a lot of water. Even when it's under 80 degrees, you're obviously gonna drink a lot of water, but particularly when you hit that 80 degree mark, your water consumption goes exponentially up. So it's very important to have lots of water. I will say, of course, there's always a trade-off, right? Because water is obviously the heaviest thing you're gonna carry. So the more water you carry, the heavier your pack's gonna be. Last thing I'll say is uh, right now, like I said, I'm just using this 24 hour pack. I could put all of this in an Alice pack and I might go back to that. I did have this all in an Alice pack at one point. Uh, however, the Alice pack itself comes with a weight of around 10 pounds from what I've been able to discover. Uh, the weight of this pack itself comes in at half that. Uh, I think it's like three, maybe five pounds. I don't even think it's five pounds. So it's a significant weight savings on the pack. The really, really nice thing about the Alice Pack is because it has that frame, it's able to keep the gear off your back and you're able to wear like a water bladder on your battle rattle, which is really, really nice. So there are some trade-offs that you just gotta decide for you what you can make. Chances are you probably have a pack about this size. Um, if you've been into gun stuff for any length of time, you probably bought yourself a 511 pack or something like that. That's a decent 24-hour pack. And if you did, then you could go home and you could make this right now. And that's a very nice thing to be able to do. One of the things I also like about this pack in particular is that it has molly from top to bottom on the sides, which allows me to run all these extra pouches and plus the pack up as I need to. The other thing that's really great about this is this pack could also serve as a bailout bag from a vehicle. Uh, if I was gonna do vehicle operations, I could just take the sleeping pad off, maybe leave that in the car, take the sleeping bag out, maybe leave that in the car, and I could have some other stuff in here so that if we had to abandon the vehicles and go, I could grab this pack and go, and this could serve in that capacity. An Alice pack would be a lot more cumbersome because of that frame again, and it's a lot larger pack. It's just not as convenient of a grab and go bag from a vehicle but this bag could still serve that role. So this bag allows me to serve across multiple functions, be it patrolling or vehicle stuff, and that's one of the reasons that I'm running it right now the way I am. Okay, so that's it. That's all the stuff that goes in the pack. Like I said, it's incredibly boring. Uh, it's just sleeping stuff, water, and food is 90% of the pack with a couple little extra fun toys here and there. But by and large, it's pretty boring. So you could easily set up this pack with all the stuff that you need, again, for the next 72-ish hours. Just think of it like tactical camping. <laughs> Someone's gonna hate that I said that. You can just think of it like tactical camping. Uh, that's really silly and really oversimplified. However, that's, that's a, an easy way to think about it. That's, that's what you're doing. That's all the stuff that you're gonna need for the next 48 to 72 hours. So I hope that was helpful as far as what goes in the pack. Again, if we're gonna be prepared, Americans who want to embrace our martial heritage, then we need to have a pack that's set up, that's ready to go, that we could grab at a minute's notice. Do brave deeds and endure.